Blog post time. We have a ton of stuff to talk about. Where are the open all orbs? What's going on with the red dots? Massive reworks for the Spider-Verse, including speed upgrades to Penny and Peter B. Parker. Are they going to be useful outside of raids? Then also updates on Kilm. Is Undying going to be required? Is Spider Society going to be required? There's going to be a new raid. And guess what's going to be required? Spider Society. A lot of good stuff in today's blog post. So we're going to get into it. We're going to start off with the Stormwatch. And starting on the 16th, spend campaign energy. That'll be an event on the 16th. Earn blitz credits. Uh, comfortably max the daily milestone if you have 50 wins per rotation, three rotations a day. So there's a blitz event. Blitz is the best. And that'll be starting on the 16th. Spend ISO energy will be starting on the 17th. Also, you will need to spend ISO energy for the attack of the plants alliance wide event and there we go allied supply orbs on the 17 earn allied supply orbs and spend iso eight energy for the tack of the plants tag of the plants alliance wide event starting on the 17th now also a lot of questions about where the open all orbs and it is addressed towards the end of the blog post let's get into it first things first pav is going to be coming on the 15th which is monday so that'd be for purchase and uh looking forward to that i'm thinking he's gonna be a little bit better we're gonna go over the reworks towards the end he's getting a small rework battle pass is gonna be void knight Woof. need void knight one of the better characters cosmo blitz then we got events starting on the 16th earthlings needed earn event orb fragments spend campaign energy spin iso 8 campaign energy revenge of the blitz earn blitz credits Tag of the plant, spend ISO 8 campaign energy and earn allied supply four orb fragments. Then extreme X-Men fountaining, which is Marvel Strike Force fancy talk for farmable. And their locations are going to be down here. Then on the 19th, animal six pack quick rumble, blitz with superior six. Now we've been waiting for this. We knew this was coming. Nightcrawler, one of the better characters in the game, will be coming to the Cosmic Crucible store very nice maybe hopefully you have some of your credits saved i know i don't so that's gonna be a mess for me forge will be going to the war store and then sunspot will be going to hard heroes node 4-6 so i went and hearted him already and then boy i'm crying because i opened up all my teal orbs for my cosmic crucible so that's gonna be a hassle right there i should have saved that currency for nightcrawler all right Pav is coming to the game, and this is pretty standard stuff right here. Uh, that'll be coming on the 15th, and then we'll be able to up purchase him for offers, as one would expect. Friday, there's a special free claim, which is going to have Peter B. Parker in there, as well as some event currency. We're going to scroll through all of this. We're going to talk about Dark Dimension and Beta Ray Bill. Um, there's going to be a pretty significant change, in my opinion. Uh, in the near future, we're reducing the cooldown period after completing a Dark Dimension from 24 hours to just one hour. If you're ready to battle against the Dread One's forces in Dark Dimension just after one hour, then good luck and move out. And this was also a thing with Pocket Dimension. Pocket Dimension. I don't know if they're ever bringing Pocket Dimension back, but um, if you, you could usually play it twice and you had to wait a day. Now they're going to change that to one hour. Fine. And then also getting updated is the epic campaign section, specifically the order which Dark Dimensions appear when you enter the epic campaign screen. When the updates go live, the newest Dark Dimension will appear first, and then Dark Dimensions will appear in ascending order. So the way that reads to me is that right now it just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it'll be seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. All right dark dimension celebration and i just want to toggle over to this congratulations to beta ray bill for being the first player to beat dark dimension 7 and then he posted on the player voice server for me personally i love puzzles and look forward to when things like dark dimension and terror modes come to marvel strike force they break up the grind especially for in-game players with new content that can be fun and challenging why is this important it's time to elicit your support we have a list of 18 characters that the community will select from you may vote in the attached form for two or three choices 
the top two voted selections will be the final choices that you will be able to pick from where you receive either 100 or 150 shards and a seven red star of that character. So I will put a link to the form and uh, there's the link right there. I will put a link to this post right in the description. Close considerations, probably Nightcrawler and the Hive Mind characters. And um, Nightcrawler is going to the Crucible store, and then the Hive Mind characters are the only other characters uh, that are not fountainable slash farmable. So, uh, like for me, I think I selected like uh, Void Knight and Red Goblin. So, I think that there's probably going to be four that people are going to consider Nightcrawler and the three Hive Mind. The rest of them. I mean, for late game players, the rest of them don't seem all that interesting. Okay, so Spider Society reworks and um, boy, they did not look like they are going to be attractive outside of raids. So hopefully this will give them some viability elsewhere. Pav, increasing the focus for Spider-Man Pav's passive from 50 to 100%. His passive laid back menace will gain 20% crit chance, 10% crit damage, 100% focus. So there's the upgrade. Hero Spider Verse allies gain crit chance, crit damage, and 100% focus. So this should help the team land more negative effects. They also had to update Ghost Spider. Man, they've done a lot of changes to this team, actually. Penny Parker, my goodness. Increased base speed stat to 122. It was 106 before, which is abysmally slow. Like, really slow. So, it's increased to 122. Peter B. Parker increased speed base stat to 224. It was 108 before, so this is. Now, I want to read this, and then we've got some clarification on what this all means. Skill nodes in all raids, especially Incursion 2. And we're going to read that here in a minute because they're going to boost the amount of crimson gear for finishing 100%, which is not easy to do right now, especially with invaders. They will play an important role in the next iteration of Escape of Kiln. And this is a little confusing. And, and uh, uh, Archangel, not Cerebro, Archangel gave me some uh, information on that. And the next week blog will be all about Escape from Kiln. And then this is also hyper important. They will be required for an upcoming new raid. More details on this new raid will be released soon. Last week, they also mentioned and changed the post when they talked about Kiln. They were talking about Undying. One of the cells, and it said required, but then they changed it the next day to feature. One of the cells will feature the Undying trait. So make sure you rocket this team power sky high before their important space mission. So... Archangel sent me over some clarification, which because some of that was a little bit confusing. The blog last week originally said Undying would be required for Escape of Kiln. It was quickly edited the next day and changed to Featured, not Required. Undying was added to the trait that can be used on certain floors. That is what needed to be communicated, but those floors will have other options. Undying is encouraged for the floors they will perform well on. And then the same is true for Spider Society. Spider Society is are also recommended for Kiln and will perform better than the other options, but are not required, but encouraged. Lastly, and this is kind of important right here, Spider Society is required for a brand new raid that is coming soon. This is not a new difficulty for incursion. It is a new raid. More information on this new raid will be in a blog soon. I don't know if that's going to be some changes to a Greek raids. I don't know. There was data mines on that in the past. We will have to see what that actually means in a future blog post. Now, they're changing and they're upping the raid rewards starting next raid season because they go in two week blocks there will be a significant increase to crimson gear that you can earn from the raid season leaderboards incursion to reward incursion to raids will also grant a large bonus in season points at 100 completion so looks like we're going to get more 
crimson gear from placing you know in the top 100 or the top 1000 alliance and they're going to give more points more season points for doing 100 percent which is hyper challenging right now it's a total hassle right now um with the invaders maybe that'll be easier when we get the spider society be sure to get all the skill nodes in the raid and share your alliance scores higher in the raid season and recap the rewards of increased and reap the rewards of increased crimson air okay and there is some clarification on showcases because uh on the iron patriot uh, there was low drop rates on the orbs and some people got bad drop rates, weren't able to unlock Iron Patriot and they weren't able to complete parts of the showcase. And so they've provided some guidance going forward. And I think this is a good thing. This is a good thing. When a new team launches, we provide showcase. So highlight the team, add this to their story and reward players who build the team right away. So they're... They're rewarding spenders, right? That's part of it, right? For the Spider Society Showcase, players can pl complete up to three difficulty tiers for free if they are highly engaged and play skillfully. Each difficulty tier brings increased challenges and rewards. In some recent showcases, they're specifically, like I think the main issue is with Iron Patriot. Players are only able to complete two difficulties tiers for free, which was way less satisfying which was less satisfying we're working to make three tiers as the standard going forward going forward we endeavor to keep the trend of three tiers this is subject to change we will let you know in advance if it is modified for a future showcase so i'm glad that people complained on reddit i'm glad that i complained because yeah all right then what we've all been waiting for update on recent issues unfortunately the persistent of the red dot on the inbox has to be fixed on the client side. So this, the, that means on the phone, right? So it's not a server adjustment, it's a phone adjustment. Client side is our phones, right? This means the fix will be in a future app update. And they typically only do that like every six weeks or so. I'm not sure if it's gonna mean the new patch or they can do a hot fix, but it just means that the red dot is not getting fixed right away. All right, but at least they're talking about it, right? Let's go to the next part. We are looking into bringing back the open all or button as soon as possible. Our top concern is game stability. We are looking into several things to improve. We hear your feedback and know this is a highly desired feature and it'll be back as soon as we can do so without disrupting stability. and. Uh, the way that it was explained to me on a conference call with uh, the head guy, RJ, is that the open all button would ping the server like four times per second, and it crashed the servers when everybody got all those rewards. And so they're going to have to do something differently. And, and I think what this meme is saying here is that people are hoarding orbs, waiting for it to come back, and that's going to crash the servers. Oh boy, oh boy. Also, can we do something about Doom? Mean a health or armor boost or something. Such a good character gets one shot at level 100 G18 and max ISO. When I use him, he hardly gets a turn. Yeah, kind of almost need to put him next to a pre taunting tank nowadays. I, I This has been my experience with Doom is that he has been uh, super hard to get to work. Also, Cosmic Crucible Room 4 currently there's a problem with hella so for now uh right now uh, the suggestion is not to use hella in room four the team is investigating an issue where greg hella summon instantly dies after spawning in cosmic crucible specifically in room four um updog um did a post and for me hundred dollars is a hundred dollars but i think if you're pushing to do uh, Mephisto early, then maybe, maybe this is a better deal. I don't know. This is comes out to a dollar twenty eight per one million gold, which is a very good value compared to other gold offers they sell. It's still a hundred bucks. Been watching it closely because I've been coring the store for Crimson Gear, um, and then the offer is better than people thought yesterday. It's sixty six million gold plus the forty nine gold orbs. I think 
still a hundred dollars. So, uh, if you're, if you're open to spending a hundred dollars on just gold, there you go. I don't know, man. A hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. Also, this is kind of annoying. And, um, this is the battle pass and there's a couple things here. You know, if you're going to spend 20 bucks, you know, a week and Marvel strike force, which is $80 for the four, um, battle pass and strike passes, you know, that's going to be the best money spent in Marvel strike force, right? Well, one of the things is one of the, you know, the, there's the two passes. One of them is good for dark promotion, uh, credits. Another one's good for cores, right? Well, we got shorted on this one right here. Uh, yeah, it does have a good character, which is zombie juggernaut, which is been a very scarce character, right? It's, it's an Alliance war team for sure. But instead of giving dark promotion credits, it gives a four red zombie Iron Man. So that might be okay. If you don't have the reds on zombie Iron Man, I think a lot of people don't, but if you do have a four red zombie Iron Man already, and you purchase the battle pass. When you get to the end of the battle pass and get this, you get elite fours. You don't get credited back the dark promotion credits. You get elite fours. So um, Archangel did type up something here on Twitch chat, which I thought was helpful. And he's talking about this specifically. I have shared a lot of feedback about this. It is being looked to looked into for the future. It's actually a complex issue because the elite conversion is baked in in and it will take some time to figure out if how to improve it regardless i have passionately shared feedback about this past not having the dark promotion credits the vast majority of players do not have zombie iron man at four red or higher so hence why it was added to the past the past has more in it than usual and has a zombie juggernaut who is not a v yes Yes, he's a he's a good character, right? All right, so I guess the trade-off is this is kind of bad if you already have the four reds on him, uh, but the trade-off is you get the zombie juggernaut. I don't know. I bought it without looking at it too closely. I think I would have bought it anyways for the zombie juggernaut, but anyways. Why don't the kids get grayed out in the raid store when you buy them? So I was at... in Texas... And there was the, the Marvel Strike Force meetup where a bunch of us got together and played Marvel Strike Force. That's right. We all played Marvel Strike Force together. We all shared and shared our TCPs with each other. It was a really, it was amazing fest, but also a developer showed up. And he was one of the guys that uh, spearheaded and implemented um, the UI changes like with, with, with changing uh, the ISOs. You could just change it the screen by tapping the dot. And so I said, hey, this is an issue. And he's like, We'll get to it. We'll see. So why don't the elite raid credits get grayed out of the raid store when you buy them? So like, like if you already have like the passive on black cat, why does it still show up instead of graying out? So hopefully that'll get changed in the future. And so lastly, we're going to finish up the video with math. I love you guys love math. BK and the premium uh, orbs is are terrible. I opened 80 of them. Not one single BK shard. I've gotten some in nice red gum and a couple of there. And there's some, other characters quite max, but the man, man, the odds for BK are absolute garbage. Well, I just want to say it's, it's 2%. So it's a 2% chance, right? And, um, I agree that 2% is low, but this individual is not technically mathematically unlikely, unlucky. He's not unlucky yet. So if you open up 80 orbs that have a 2% drop rate, there's a 19.8% chance, basically a one in five chance that you'll get zero. So this is not really unlucky. I, I mean, I think if you go like 130, yeah, then you suddenly have become unlucky. Cause that only, that, you know, if you open 130 of them. So the bad news is this, you know, if you go 130 for the 2% drop rate, there's a 7% chance you're still gonna get zero. Is math fun or what? Everybody loves math. That's why you're here. You're here for the math. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section. But yeah, the drop rates are garbage. Bye. Bye for now. Never, never, never gonna get Mephisto.